One thing I absolutely cannot stand is the giant concert monopolies that we all fight with. One major problem is the on-demand dynamic pricing. Prices fluctuating all over the place. How do you ever know the right time to buy a ticket? Prices could be up, they could be low. Super difficult to know and understand. I decided to write a Chrome extension. The extension tracks the price of the ticket for you and then it'll send you an email so that you could actually take action on buying the ticket or just waiting. Let's start with a quick working demo. As an example, we're going to be looking here at the upcoming Drake uh, tour. Now here is the extension. You can see this T and you can see uh, track prices. There's a button there. Let's right click here and get in the inspect uh, area so that I can show you some debug of the tool. This is going to be our console and we're going to see some output here as we push uh, the button track prices. Okay, there's some output. So it find prices has been called. And then on a timer, it's going to actually print here. There we go. It says email sent successfully. And which email did it send? Let's pull over my email and you can see price update that was sent. And the price that was sent is the new price is 251. So what the tool did is it looked at the price and if the price was below $275, it sent the email. And it's sending it on an interval. It's sending it every 10 seconds. You could obviously extend or decrease that if you wanted. If you've enjoyed the content thus far, I really appreciate it. A like and subscribe. Let's go ahead and get started. You're going to need to create four files. So content.js, manifest.json, popup.html, and popup.js. Don't worry, I'm going to be pushing all these to my repo so you can just pull them down and use them. The first file we're going to look at is manifest.js, and here is what you're going to do. You have to set up these uh, key value pairs in order for the Chrome extension to load into Chrome. So you're going to need the manifest version. Here's the name, ticket tracker, you can name it whatever you wanted. Version one, sure, why not? Permissions, active tab. So it's gonna need permissions on the active tab to do the work. Action, uh, default pop-up. So that little thing that popped up, that is, this This is it right here, popup.html with the button in it. Here is content scripts. What we gotta do is tell it, okay, where can this particular script be injected? And we're gonna say all URLs. That's why it can be run on that ticketing website. What are we gonna run? It's gonna, what's gonna be injected to run? This is the content.js. So when we push the button, it goes to our other file to execute some functions. Next, we're gonna do popup.html. This is the simple little HTML that shows up whenever you click on uh, the actual Chrome extension. So here it is, uh, ticket finder, the title, and the ID is find prices, and that, there's the text track prices. That's how you saw that, that's the actual button. And then what is it gonna do? It's actually gonna call this popup.js, this JavaScript file popup.js. Okay, now let's look at popup.js. There's only a few lines of code here. The real meat is gonna be in content.js, but we're not there yet. What we're gonna do is uh, find prices. There's a listener there and it's waiting to be clicked. Here is the chrome.tabs.query. So we're taking the active tab, looking at the active window, and we're actually sending a message to that tab. So chrome.tabs.send message. What we're sending is the action find prices. So the listener on the other side will receive that. If it gets this text find prices, it knows to execute a certain amount of code. As I said before, the content.js is the real meat of what we're doing here. So we add a listener and once it receives uh, the action, it checks, hey, is this the find prices? Did the sender send the find prices text? If it did, now we know we can do work. So then we just log here, console.log, prices called. So that's where you saw that debug. Now we're gonna actually set up an interval here. So set interval is a function that we're gonna be using. We don't want this to run nonstop. We want it to wake up and run, wake up and run. Remember the interval can be uh, whatever you want. I had it in 10 seconds just for the demo, but obviously this could be uh, much, much longer. And it probably should be because prices won't change that much probably during a day. What we're gonna be looking for is this uh, element ID, this quick pick buy button QP-O. Once we get that, then we know we can pull the price from that. If we do find that button, now we need to do some work. What we're gonna do is actually look at the text and remember the text is gonna be a dollar sign. That's what's going on here, the dollar sign and then a price. We need to split that off. So we're gonna split it into parts. Then we're gonna convert that to a number and actually use that as price. Here we are checking on price if it's less than $275. Obviously that could be whatever price you wanted. You could be logging this information, storing it away in a file for your own historical records. You can do whatever you want. In this example though, I'm checking the price and then we're gonna actually send an email to myself if the price reaches a certain point so then I know to take action. Here is the email function that we're gonna be building now. So send elastic email. This is going to be the title. 
And then here is the body of the email and it's just sending new price. Let's now work on that, that helper email function. So right here, so send elastic email, subject and a body. We'll set up some params. And then we need to set your API key, your email API key, your subject, your from email, your to email, the body, and then is transactional. Come to the top here and actually set those up. So you're gonna have your email API key, your from email, and your to email. You would never check this in. What this demo shows though, is that you would install on your machine. You would install in your Chrome browser. You would never share this email API key with someone else. Okay, which email client am I using? So I'm using this Elastic email. It was super easy to set up. Free, I've got the free tier. So I think it, you can send 100 emails a day for free. Really nice and easy. All you have to do is send it to the API and it does the work for you. Next is gonna be to call to the Elastic email uh, API. So here it is, elasticemail.com version two email send. It's gonna be a post and you're just gonna send it those parameters that you already built up. We're gonna do a dot then. So when it returns, we're gonna be getting the JSON of the answer. We're gonna do another dot then and get the data so that we can actually print to console.log the email was sent successfully. If that didn't work, we're gonna do a dot catch on the error and then we're gonna print the error of why the email was not sent. Okay, and that wraps up the send elastic email function, super easy and handy. And now we're gonna wrap up our main function. So if the price does not hit under 275, we don't do anything, but you could actually add a different message or you could actually send the, well, hey, what price was it? If you were tracking the prices over time. This else here takes care of, hey, if we didn't find the button, uh, the button not found. And so we'd have to take, take that into account. And then the last thing here is the set interval. It's in milliseconds. So 10,000 milliseconds is 10 seconds. You obviously can crank this way up, send it once per hour, once every two hours, once a day, whatever you'd like. Once all of these files are built, now we need to actually install it on our Chrome browser. So let's do that. The first thing you need to do is come to Chrome colon slash slash extensions. That'll get you to all your extensions in your browser. Turn on this developer mode. Then you're gonna do load unpacked and this is gonna load your custom extension that you just built. Go ahead and browse to the extension area. So mine's Chrome extension and do select and it's gonna load it up. You will get an error here if it didn't find a certain file that you included in your manifest and that's okay. So it's, it's super noisy, it'll tell you. And once you do that, you can do a refresh. Come over here to your plugins and you can see that ticket tracker is there and there is your new plugin. Another thing I wanted to show you, if you do run it and you get some errors, so let's let's run this, pop over to your extensions and then you're gonna see, hey, errors are here. So click on errors and it actually tells you some of the errors that were happening in your extension. Super helpful for debugging. I hope you enjoyed and get some use out of this Chrome extension that you find some really great deals on tickets. If you've learned or got something out of the video, please like and subscribe. I super appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Until next time.